back on the IS250. I'm gonna replace the headlights. Need to remove this panel and this panel and probably that panel. these rivets with a screwdriver or if you have a rivet tool which kind of looks like a hook pry it up that's it you're just gonna remove the ones that need to be removed and some of these are broken and missing here that one's zip tied <laughs> whatever you got to do what I bought here stream vision brand pretty cheap AC headlights 35 watt so if you do 55 watt it might melt the lens with a plastic or something chrome in there might melt it's probably not worth the bump if you even get a bump 35 watt you want to make sure it's that AC for the ballast so you want the ballast to be AC if they don't specifically say they're AC they're probably DC and a lot of the cheap cheap ones are going to be DC unless you go with something really high end it's going to be DC and the bulbs these ones are specifically rated as AC so are the other ones sold separately they have this lining around the cable supposedly uh, fire protection <laughs> who knows but these are AC bulbs and these are AC ballasts so the alternating current will produce a better you know a more stable output and less issues possibly stronger etc etc so just go with the AC if you can these were $40 total the cheapest I could find and I really wasn't caring about money at this point but there was nothing else on Amazon and I needed them overnight so if you have if you want the best, they're probably a couple hundred bucks. You can go direct on websites, but that's where I'm at. Also, these are 5,000K. The maximum output you'll probably get is around 5,000 or 6,000K. I used to get 8,000K in all my cars because I kind of like the blue tint, but it really does diminish the, the throw of the light. And they also, HIDs do turn bluer when they start to die and dimmer. Some companies will say that the 5,000K is white or yellow or whatnot so it may depend on the brand you're getting what you want to aim for is the ones that say you know, bright light or daylight or white light etc i think the 6000k on this brand was labeled as diamond white but still reviews said it had a hint of blue these ones are 5000k they had no yellow and they said they're pure white so i'm going to go with this but just keep in mind there's that buffer and then 4500 and below will be yellowish which is really ugly in my opinion so I'm not going to go with those also I don't believe that would put the maximum output out so I'm going to install these these are thin and I'll show the way I did the old ones and they're really just plug and play you kind of just want to strap them to something to keep vibrations out but that's it just to show the previous setup I had so the passenger side is zip tied here around this cable coming here it's it's fairly stable and the rest is just tucked underneath here and you can see the light there and then for the driver's side, this was just zip tied here, and this one's been fine for years. It lays flat on top, you could VHB tape this to this if you really wanted. And the headlight flows down to the side there. To access the passenger side, you're going to remove this air box. So you just squeeze the tab here and pull this off. You'll take up Phillips and you'll loosen this just so you can pop it out. Remove the tabs. Should be a fourth one up there. It is. Okay. This this one here hooks underneath the rest of on top, and then you can just wiggle this out. Assuming this is loose enough. Okay. What happens actually is the air filter got caught in the end. So if you, just, if you pull out the air filter first, this pops right out. This requires no force. This is held by a 10 millimeter right there and a 10 millimeter right there. Right there, right there. So I'm going to remove this. And this snorkel, if you really want this out of the way too, which you might have to do, is just probably a 10 mil here and a 10 mil here. You will need most likely two extensions, at least a shorty and a long, to get down to this one here. And just note the angle on this one to make sure you get it perfectly perpendicular so you don't strip it out. Screws out, just pop that out sideways, lift that up, dump out all the bugs, or don't. And now you're ready to access this. You can see here, it's just a clip. Just pop that over. And there are two screws there, but I don't think you need to undo them. No, you don't, okay. Now you can see the bulb location here. So I'm just gonna turn this and pull it out. There it is. So I just turned it counterclockwise by about a quarter turn. You'll just line it up. This is 
it says H8, H9, H11. They're all the same. That's what this is. You don't want to touch this housing with your fingers because of the oils. And new ones will come with white gloves, but realistically you can just not touch it and you'll be okay. I wanted to note that on the originals, I had to drill this out. I used a circular bit, a step up bit. You can get a set of these or a singular for $10 or so at Harbor Freight. That's the cheapest place. Otherwise, they'll be expensive elsewhere. You can get them for wood because this is plastic. I'll show it, or I'll put a link in the description. I had to drill it to get the plug through. So you want to have the light on one side and then run the plug through on the other one. And you can see the rubber seal inside. You want to make sure that seal is still in there. Make sure it didn't get stuck on the thing. And if it did, pull it off and reseal this. It's going to look something like this. It's really tight fit with this plug. This is going to be here. The bulb's going to be on the inside. So I'm going to run these wires here in the back. And it just squeezes through. So I kind of tilted it a little bit. So I got it in and then just tilted it inside. I'm not going to put it back in now. And then just run the other ones through. Pull them through. So now these are all through and these are going to plug to the ballast. And then just try your best. Worry about the outside of this because the inside has these stability notches. So just try to get the outer one. So you're just going to sandwich this in between. Sandwich sounds good. Now we're ready to install this. Looks fairly secure. First, just plug this in. It is universal. There's connectors on each side, so it should just... One thing, though, is that before you seal this up, you may want to test it because you may have to reverse the polarity on this. If you had to guess, it looks like this side's possibly black and this side's blue, so I would probably put the black side to black, but then again, who knows? So I'm going to plug that in and test it before I put this housing back on. Definitely test your headlights before you put the parts back on. But this car is fairly simple. And I just realized that I accidentally forgot to put that on, so I'm going to cut this off with wire cutters. This is kind of funny. If this happens to you, don't fret. Just break it off. Again, try not to touch the plastic housing, though. Okay. All right. Good shell. Now there are three hooks. Nope, they're all. These two are kind of small and this one's big. So look for the big one, which is towards the front of the car on this side. Let's wiggle it a bit till you feel it line up. And then it feels like it's in there. And then just twist clockwise. I can turn a little more. It's a little hard to reach in here. Okay. Yeah. It did about a quarter turn. It's it's difficult to reach in there. If you do use pliers, be very careful how much tension you use because you'll just break this thing right off. You'll eventually tuck all this back in here. You can pull the excess out like that and tuck this back in here carefully, but I am going to test it first. Tested it, did work, so we're gonna go from here. These two hooks go in the side. This is passenger side again, and then it should be good to just push down. There shouldn't be very much tension if there is. Make sure you got the wires clear of the seal, and then just pop this over if your hands can't fit in there. Use a tool to bring it up, and then it lines up in there. For the plugs here, these are male and female. You can't mix them up, so the, and you'll put the pin on the side where the clip is. So right here, till it snaps in. Right there, till it snaps in. And the same with the actual ballast. So you want to put the, the clasp on where the pin is, and it will snap over it. Very simple. These do have bolt holes, mounting holes, and come with screws, but I don't recommend doing that. I, I'm, I, may use, I, I may use VHB tape. You just clean the surfaces really well, put some alcohol on there, clean it. But unfortunately, there's nowhere decent here to put this because this is covered. This was the best place because you gotta get it under the shielding. This is built to exude heat. This looks like a heat sink, so I don't wanna put it on top of there either. This thing's already battling heat, I'm sure. You could try putting it down here by the fan right here on this sidewall, that may work. 
but I just feel as if it's safer up here on top. So it lasted for several years, the original. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back here. You just wanna, you want to alleviate vibration if you can. I do prefer to do things much more solidly and organized, but for now this should work. So I'm gonna put one on this side. I'm gonna have it sit like this so the wiring sits towards the fender. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around and put it in between these wires. That one's fairly tight, and then I'm just gonna put one over the cross section of it. I'm gonna run it through the back here. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That's not going anywhere. And see, the reason I like this too is because it's on the plastic, and the plastic will provide a little bit of buffer as far as shaking in this metal hitting the metal. I kind of like that as well. Okay. So theoretically, this one's good to go. Again, this is subjective. You can put this anywhere and do whatever you'd like. Maybe you want to just VHB tape it to the back of the headlight housing. That could work too, possibly. But putting back that screw there would be difficult. I mean, there are several options, but because I just did this the first time, I'm going to stick with this because I'm limited on time today. So, <laughs> all right, cool. That's it. This right here, you can also zip tie around this inner liner here just to have it balanced a little bit better. Quick note, when you're putting the airbox bottom back, it has this peg that has to go in that hole, so that may cause you a little bit of issue when you're lining it up. I wanted to show on the passenger side that that's zip tied in there nicely. It's, this is nice and loose over everything. It's clearing there, and it's not caught in there either. Just make sure the wiring's clear on the bottom of this before you tighten these bolts there, so you can just pull it over. I, I did. It's hard to see on the camera, but it is clear. Here on the driver's side, you can remove this 110 mil bolt that and you're just going to pull this up and off it just slides over the top of that really simple this is very simple car change although some cars you don't have to move anything but this is not too bad once you're in there you have the clip pull that towards you and it will slide off and then just pull it outwards remember those two hooks are on the side most likely you won't be changing your old HIDs, but ah, see the rubber seal came off on this one, so make sure you hang on to that. Make sure I grab that. So I'm gonna wiggle the headlight out of there, just like the other side, but I just wanted to show how simple this is. It's a little tighter, but it's much easier to access as far as taking things off. Also though, looks like you can remove this back clip. If you want to snap these out like this, so if you snap that off, maybe a lot easier. So one inch is fine, one inch is fine. And you get it through, just snap it back on. That's it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. When you take the plate off and you take the bulb out, you're only going to have this one connection here that you unplug. You're just going to squeeze. You're just going to squeeze it and undo it. And that's it. You're just going to have this clip and the plug until you hear the snap. Give the tug, make sure it's nice, nice and tight. And then you can, and I did it again. <laughs> so. Again, I forgot to take this off, but it's kind of funny. Before you run this through, you can unscrew this. I actually kind of like that this protects the bulb while I'm working on it, so I am indifferent about leaving the cap on there. This is cheap plastic, so you can cut it in half and just snap it off. Again, just look for the bigger side, the two smaller ones, and look in there. The bigger side on this one is towards the top. This one, I'm gonna pull some slack as close to this plate as I can because there's so little room to work with your hand. Maybe if you have someone with really small hands, they can help you out. I think last time I did have someone with small hands do this, but let's see what we can do. You'll kind of wiggle it and you'll feel it set. So once it's flat against the thing and it's hard to move, then you can tell it's in there. Then you're just gonna use some force and turn it clockwise, a quarter turn. It's quite difficult to grab that if you have bigger hands. Smaller hands will definitely prevail doing this. Get your girlfriends to do it. Or if you're a girl, you're lucky putting headlight bulbs in. This one was a little more difficult to gauge, but you can pull backwards to see to make sure it's Alright, that was fun. Now I'm gonna now I'm going to plug in the black connector. 
that's in so i'm gonna pull that with some slack all the way down and then these i'm gonna pull all the slack out if i can okay that's on let's make our way with this back on here it's okay if it pops out of the front side because realistically this is how you thread it in the first place it's in there everything's solid and now this is ready to be tested I've tested it, it works. I should have done it before I plugged it in, but realistically it's close enough. This is for the cover that goes here. One of the plugs that holds it on goes here. I never use it. That's what this was zip tied to before. This comes with tiny screws. I happen to have a longer one in the same width. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use two washers. One's to hold the screw and the other one's to hold it on there. And I'm going to put one screw in it there, but I'm also going to continue to use zip ties. Because this is so difficult to access, I put the two washers there and there's, I'm going to put it up through there and put it on like this and take this tiny little nut and put it on here. Oddly enough, I bought the world's smallest wrench set and I bought it for a four millimeter for the wastegate. So it may be a universal size, but this tiny 5.5 .5 wrench seems to fit this nut, so I, I will be using that to tighten it. Could have put Loctite on here, I should have done that. You can probably just put a piece of tape. Inside of this bracket here, it's hard to see, there was, there was already a little hole. I just drilled it a tiny bit bigger. I'm just gonna wrap it up between these two and kind of hook it around this inside loop. Just tighten it. And it's mounted on plastic, so that should help with the vibrations. This thing's pretty good to go. Again, this one would be easy. You could VHB tape it to the cover here, if that's what you'd like to do. That's it, we're done. Quick recap. The passenger side is more tedious to take apart, but you have much better access as far as getting the bulb out and the plate. The driver's side is much quicker to access because it's just one bolt, but getting your hand in there is quite tight and you might need someone's help to get smaller hands in there or use pliers possibly, really short ones. Either way, this job is super easy. Anyone can do it. It's much simpler than my BMW, much simpler than some of the Audis where you have to take the bumper off, crazy stuff. The ballasts are in, they're mounted pretty safely. They lasted many years in the same exact position before, so I'm pretty confident they'll be okay here. And if you're just changing the bulb without the ballast, you can ignore all that and just pop the new bulb in plug it in and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. Get your headlights changed and subscribe for more. Take care.